In my last video, I made a cool base for a voxel engine that renders a map and allows you to destroy it. That was pretty cool, but the map was loaded from an image, so it was always the same. That's why today I'll add procedural generation to generate random, infinite worlds. To do procedural generation, you need to get random values and use them to generate a landscape. But you can't just use completely random values, otherwise your world would look terrible. Instead, you have to use some kind of noise with smooth transitions. Most people use Perlin noise, so I'll use that too. Perlin noise uses vectors and dots or something, and it uses that to generate random smooth noise. Ah! See, I can generate noise too. <laughs> I found a cool GitHub repo with code that lets you generate Perlin noise. No, you can't just copy my code and paste it into yours. These people are so nice for giving me their code. Once I had it working, it was able to generate random numbers for me based on a seed. But as you can see, the numbers are all kind of close to each other, which means that the world is going to be smooth. And this is exactly what I want, so now I plug those numbers into the height for the terrain and generate it. Um. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Max, how many voxels did you just generate? I don't know. I didn't count it. I am not really a math guy. Okay, so once I put a limit to how far the world will generate, it's actually pretty nice. I can change some parameters to choose how high it goes to make the ups and downs like mountains or more like small hills. I can also change the seed to generate a completely random terrain. So now you can play the game, fly around... Well, maybe for like one second. Okay, yeah, I need to generate a bigger map. As you can see, I can generate huge landscapes and render them without lagging. Also, remember what I said in the last video? To give you an idea of what the scale of the voxels are supposed to be, this whole map is actually 12 meters. I just haven't adjusted the scale of the map because I won't use it for too long. Well, now's the time to make them actually small. And yep, of course that makes the map seem even smaller, so I have to generate a landscape even bigger and increase the height scale so it looks the same size as before, but as you can see now, there are a lot more details. Can we also take a moment to appreciate my epic coder skills? I mean, this right here is around 2.2 million cubes and it doesn't lag at all. And this is totally thanks to me. <laughs> but obviously, creating and rendering the whole map at once means it has to stay pretty small or it would be too much for the PC to handle. Instead, what I can do is make it a bit smaller, but as you move around, new parts get generated and the parts behind get deleted. If I do that, you can see generating a new part creates a huge lag spike. There's two reasons for this. First, it is generating a lot of data, so it takes a lot of time for the computer to do this. And second, I am really dumb and I messed up my code. <laughs> I started by fixing the second problem and it's already a bit better. Now for the first problem, I can't really fix it, however, what I can do is make the game not freeze while it's generating terrain by generating it in smaller pieces and leaving time for frames in between. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you, to show you guys what not to do. So yeah, don't do this guys, it's bad. Now let's remove this intentional bug that I made to show you, and uh, hey, it works perfectly now. It only generates areas in a radius around me, and it doesn't regenerate areas that are already loaded. Which is a problem that I had at first, and the result was not very good. If I make the loading radius bigger, then it starts lagging again, because even though it's loading smaller pieces, it's loading so many every time I move that it ends up lagging anyway. I could fix this by making the loading asynchronous, but that is a problem for future me, don't worry about it. Another problem that you might notice is that some sides of cubes are missing, so you can see through the map. That is, uh, not good. This is caused because each chunk is extremely selfish and does not want to share a side with its neighbors. That is not cool. So I use my knowledge from preschool to teach them how to share and work together. How cute. 
The next thing I want to do is the unloading of chunks because right now they just keep loading as you move and never unload which means it ends up getting laggy or running out of memory because there are so many chunks loaded. Now this might seem very simple to do but it was actually very hard. That's what she said! <laughs> Like I explained in the last video, I have a list of positions for my cubes. As I load new chunks, they are added to the list. But now, if I remove a chunk in the middle of the list, I need to save which positions are no longer used to reuse them for the future cubes, or else I will still run out of memory just like before. I will also need to code a way to load a chunk into those freed spaces. Those chunks will be kind of all over the place in memory, but it should be alright. Probably. <laughs> yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. I can now move a lot and generate new terrain because the old one unloads behind me so I never run out of memory like before. That's cool and all, but you might notice that it's lagging a little bit right now. So remember how I said I wouldn't make it asynchronous yet? Well, apparently now I have to. After limiting the speed of loading and unloading, it's a bit better, but it's still a bit laggy. Also, for some reason, the longer the game runs, the more my FPS drop. <sighs> I decided to print the amount of nodes loaded and uh, it's going up even when I'm not moving. What? Also, 2000 nodes? I don't think that's normal. Oh, and I also have a memory leak. Oh, and I also broke this. So yeah, I had to spend a lot of time fixing many, many problems with my engine. It felt terrible to do, but it was really necessary and I'm glad I did it sooner rather than later. It was all worth it though, because now I can move around while loading and unloading chunks with almost no frame drop and when I stop, I go back to my original FPS. But you know this wouldn't be a video of mine if nothing broke after adding or fixing something. So obviously everything I did so far in this video somehow broke my world destruction. But if I'm being honest, that's not totally true. You see, in the first video I didn't show many clips of destruction. That may have been because it broke most of the time after a couple uses. I somehow just imagined that it would fix itself, but apparently it got even worse, so I guess now I have to fix it for real. Sorry for kind of lying to you all in part 1, but this time I'll make it actually work. Not yet. Not yet. It has to be perfect. <sighs> okay, it's finally over. I present to you all my world destruction. I can punch holes into the map, dig down, to the side and even upwards. I can also create new tunnels that reach tunnels created before without any issues. It can do all this with very little to no lag for a small destruction radius and if the lag becomes an issue I can just spread the destruction over time like I did with chunks loading. I guess it's not perfect yet and still has a few bugs sometimes but the bugs are not nearly as bad as before. So I am really proud of this. I can also increase the radius to destroy huge areas, but that does freeze the game for a few seconds, so I guess if I want to do that, I will need to optimize things a little bit more. <laughs> also, a little thing to note for destruction is that nothing is saved, so if you restart the game, everything is back, but also if you move far enough away to unload the chunk and then move back to load it again, the destruction you did there will be gone. If I want to save changes later, I will need to add a save file, but for now, that's how it is. Finally, an open world needs many more things to be interesting like water, biomes, villages... But I'm not trying to remake Minecraft, and ain't nobody got time for that. That's why I decided that, at least for this video, I'm just going to add trees to make the world a little bit better. And uh, yeah, that's the best tree I could do with the current setup. I definitely need to make a model editor and loader one day, so I don't have to write every cube one by one in code. Because making a better tree than this would probably take me hours. So yeah, here we go. Procedurally generated infinite terrain with a seed to change it, 
loading and unloading as you move, destruction in all directions, and something that looks kinda like a tree. That's pretty epic. Other than that, I think the next thing I'll do for this project is better lighting, because this lighting is way too basic in my opinion. I probably won't go as far as ray tracing, but maybe something like ray marching, or at least something that looks kinda good. 